Hello, Acron fans, and welcome to another exhibition match between Chris664 Thaworth and Perlox. This match is on island, and I'm Shadow3C3. Perlox is starting out on the left side, and Chris Heverth is starting out on the right side. Chris Heverth is going for. Let's call him Chris from now. Chris is going for Vekir, and Perlox probably going for Grekin. Normally does. He is. I'll figure out in a second. Still choosing his race, and. Not sure what he's doing. He's probably distracted by something else when he was actually playing the game. Anyway, Chris is going for a pretty standard economy build, getting up the first six LC RPs on. But when he can, he's queuing more RPs, but he won't be able to build them because he doesn't have the resources for them when they will come up. And Perlox is going for Grekim. Yes, he is. So he is moving his Archkiss forward. Actually, looks like he's moving it straight into Chris's base. It's not going to be able to land because it's right on top of the annex, but he is moving it into Chris's base. Probably won't be ultimately doing that. And he has his triad set up, building up his economy, getting his octos right now while paused. And while this is happening, I'll probably point out the map. So this is Island, it's an older map, it hasn't been played a lot recently, I just wanted to see how it worked with a new paradigm. It works about as well as the old maps would be expected to. It wasn't designed for the mass expansion strategies that have come up. It was sort of designed for it, but not with actual exper experimentation. So, anyway, the way the map is laid out, there's these boxes here with six LCRPs and three QPRPs all dotted around the map. The central LCR box cannot be accessed, sorry, it's RPs. Just say LC crates and R and QP crates, not RPs. The central LC crate is inaccessible unless you destroy one of the other LC crates or QP crates, whether this QP crate. And that is something that I thought would be kind of interesting when I made it, but it turned out to not be too super useful. I haven't changed it though. Anyway, so yeah, there's these, they're dotted around the map, evenly spaced around corners. And most of the map is set up of ramps and there's some build, a lot of buildable space around the map, but it's not the most buildable space. Probably the most buildable space in the maps around the time it was made, but at this point it's pretty hard to find actual buildable space compared to most recent maps. Anyway. Perlox has his RPs mainly set up. He is walking his triad over to the south expansion, and it's about half half a minute later. Per, or Christopher, actually, Christopher jumped forward quite a ways ahead, seeing the Arcticus jumping in his base. But anyway, he was expanding towards the north base. He still is, actually, at the present, at the 239 mark. Expanding towards the north base, he has a Shin Veer. His foundation is not built in Annex or built any Zion Veers there yet. He does have a couple Teth Veers in his main base and a Zion Veer as well. That's leaving his main base after building up a ton of LCRPs. He's also getting another Teth Veer, and he is getting Auto Defense, which will finish before the Teth Veer is done. And the Arcticus has been moved. It will be now going a bit further north of the northeast area. It's Perlox's point of view. Perlox is about a minute down from here at the two minute mark. He is actually paused. Looks like he's setting up his more Octos into this base. Setting up a lot of QPRPs, actually, surprisingly enough. Probably going for very fast tech. Not a bad idea on a map this size. Fast tech is going to be quite effective. The small size of the map means that rushes are more powerful, but also that getting fast tech, fast units can be more powerful. You can be able to deal more damage before your opponent gets enough economy to be able to counteract this. That is my guess, though. Perlox doesn't have a huge amount of resources either way. And he is getting a reef as well in the south base. Not sure if this is the best idea, but he only has one triad, so he really didn't have much choice. Didn't bother to build a second triad before moving out to expand. And this is when Chris gets auto defense. So we're at the 255 mark. Chris is up at the four minute mark nearly. He has three Teth Veers and one Zion Veer and two more foundations. None of them have been developed into any other buildings though. The Annex and the North has been developed and a Zion Veer has been built from there. It is going to be starting to construct expansion RPs. And here we are, a depot is being built and an ACC being built as well, so Chris is now developing his base, getting the buildings he needs. And the Arcticus has been laid down at the Northeast Expansion, so we'll see Chris's expanding Zion Veer attempt to build some RPs. Chris now jumping back to the 314 mark, see what Prolox is up to. Prolox is actually getting advanced structures, so we will be very likely getting a Spire soon. So Prolox's point of view of the 330 mark, advanced structures is about 5 seconds away from being done, and he is just landing his Arcticus. So Perlox is definitely getting a Spire, actually far away from it, right at the edge of where his tribe can use it. Probably going to be building up, my guess is he's going to be building up Sepi Legos and working there. Just checking out what Chris is doing. Chris is actually, well, he's not doing anything right now. At the present, he was damaging that Arcticus that was near the expansion right here. This is at the 455 mark, the Zion Veer is attacking the Arcticus, wasting his time. 
Should be just building our bees. And Chris himself is actually at the three minute mark. Sending his infantry forward to intercept the Arcticus in the first place, or at least... Nope, he is doing exactly that. He's intercepting the Arcticus, trying to deal with damage he can, which is actually quite a bit of damage. The Arcticus is taking a lot of damage. It's dropped down already in the last 10 seconds. It's dropped down almost half health. Test Fears are pretty powerful against air units. I'm not totally surprised. And of course, with auto defense, the Arcticus is being destroyed. Perlox is focusing at this point in time. He is using the Arcticus to scout. It will end up dying, though. The Arcticus, 200 health. It looks like it might be able to, be able to get away. No, the Test Fears are going around it, and it is going to be destroyed. Perlox is probably going back. He is... Move back slightly. I don't think he's going to be moving back the arc, moving back further and avoiding this battle in the first place. But he does know the most important thing is he knows what Chris is up to. He knows that Chris is at the 4:30 mark getting his depot and ACC, so he doesn't have to worry so much about very early vehicles. He does not have to worry about this. He can then focus more on building up his army and also building up his expansions. He has no worries about what Chris might be doing since he knows. Chris, on the other hand, has not successfully scouted out Perlox. He has no idea what Perlox is up to. He has no idea that Perlox is in the south expansion and not really in his main base so he is at a massive disadvantage right now even though he does have a slightly stronger economy he's at a massive disadvantage so hopefully he won't end up being too destroyed by this but he isn't in a great spot he is getting housing class he will be able to get housing units quite soon although i'm surprised he hasn't built any units right now he's getting shinveers he's not getting anything else Maybe he's planning on turning the Shinveer into a vehicle, but he can just get a vehicle straight from the depot right now, so I don't know why he is doing that. It's kind of odd. And yes, he has all of his vehicles available. Perlox, on the other hand, has Octopods, he has another Arcticus, and I'm not sure if he's going to be building up Sepi Legos or what. He hasn't started building any yet, but he might pretty soon. He does have a couple of Octopods set up, and he, not much else going on, so Chris is the only one really doing anything at the moment. Chris getting another foundation, possibly, well, I'm not really sure what he used it for, probably a Bastion, really, or maybe getting Slipgate. No, he is getting an Annex, actually. Getting a second Annex, interesting. Hmm. Maybe he's planning on getting a second Depot. I'm not sure what he is exactly planning on doing. Perlox, however, is at the 450 mark and is getting more RPs. He is, like I said, kind of oddly not doing a lot. He's probably just saving up his Octopods, just keeping him here. Does not have a lot of resources, mind you. Doesn't have a lot of LC. So he can't get a far pot at the moment to start building Sepi Legos. He actually doesn't have a legal class to begin with. So it's not even a, that's kind of a moot point. And now at the 5 and 4 mark, he is moving out his octopods. They are moving out towards the north southwest expansion. Sorry, southeast expansion. Which Chris actually has not occupied at all. Chris is going straight for north expansion. He has not actually taken the northeast expansion much either. Chris is at the present at the 8 minute mark. And is getting gay tech. He, oh, I see, that's why. He's getting Veers and Gay Tech. But surprisingly, he's going Massive Veer, though. He's not gotten for any vehicles. He's just pure Massive Veer. Wow, that's a lot of Shin Veer. Shin Veer, Tet's Veer. He is just powering those Veer out. I'm not quite sure why. But it's an interesting strategy. I know that he's been playing Nail a lot. Or I think he's been playing Nail a lot. I know Nail has been using a lot of Massive Veer strategies, at least against newer players. So he might be inspired by that. I'm not quite sure. But he is going for Mass Veer, that's for sure. And Perlox is getting more Octos. Doesn't look like he has decided to have them build any RPs yet. He also hasn't gotten any more military units than he had before. This is about 635 mark, two minutes down from where Chris is. Chris now has Gate Tech, does not have a slip gate to work with it though. And his Veers have not moved at all. He is just building more and more Veers. Getting another foundation, this is likely to be our slip gate. It, well, we'll see in a moment, but this is very likely what Chris will turn into a slip gate. And I'm not surprised the Prolux hasn't... Is he building anything? I'm, oh, he is getting chronoporting, so he is actually building stuff. He is moving forward. His Octopods have not attacked the main base for Chris yet. They have just been hanging out at the southeast base and not really doing much. And looks like... Oh, Chris is actually just double-checking what Prolux is up to, but at the present we see that Chris is going for a Slipgate at the 916 mark. He is definitely getting a Slipgate. It looks like he's probably planning on chronoporting back all of those Veer class units. So it's very good to know. I'm still not, I still don't understand why he is going so heavily for Veer class units. Especially Teth Veer. I mean, okay, actually no, I understand Teth Veer, because Teth Veer have splash damage. They have splash damage against air, so they can be, in theory, effective against large masses of air units. However, I, he doesn't have any other support to go with it. I've done some testing on my own, and it tr seems like Teth Veer can only really do it if they have support. And they actually have good support going, and it looks like... Prolox has actually chronoported back some units. He is dealing quite a bit of damage as well in the unplayable past. 
While Chris double checking the damage going on, he sees damage in the playable past and the playable past. Octo's coming in, destroying some of his Teth Beer. And they will end up destroying them very handily. Teth Beer, like I said, are good against air units, not ground units. Ground units are for Zion Beer and partly Shin Beer. And Back in the present, at the 10-minute mark, he is actually moving his units forward to try to attack these Octopods here. Actually, Chronoport back. No, he is Chronoporting back. All these units. Well, definitely that was his plan, although right next to the playable past, I don't know how this is going to work with what Perlox is doing. Perlox, like I said before, is Chronoporting back. He has Chronoport in the playable past. We see the blue time wave is carrying along the results of the Chronoport. We will see that very shortly. And probably about five seconds or so. We will see the results of this Chronoport, uh, well, the Chronoport and the Time Wave coming in, and you see, Fire Pods have also been built, and yeah, the Chronoport was the Octopods. The Octopods dealing tons of damage, destroying everything that was here. Perlox cannot lose from here unless, I don't see how he'd be able to lose from here. These units have already destroyed the main base. Chris is going to be in a very tight spot right now. Chris on the blue time wave has nothing in his main base. He has a ton of Veer class units and a ton of resources we can rebuild if he wants to. Most of them are Teth Veer, however. I think there's, yeah, one Shin Veer. The rest are Teth Veer. And there's the one Zion Veer up here, but that's not much. And of course, more Shin Veer coming in from the north base, but that north base is not really well defended. There's no, there's the depot. Sorry, there's no depot. There's no ACC. There's nothing other than the Annex. And the Annex can only go so far because Veer class units while they can be powerful on mass, are really tough to work with effectively. And yes, Perlox looks like he probably has sent back these far pods. And he is sending back the Octopods as well to reinforce that attack. So he is going to be dealing a huge amount of damage here. Just finishing off Chris. I don't know if he knows about Chris's north base, but he does have no real worries. I mean, he's destroyed the eastern base, he's destroyed the main base. Chris has no ways of getting vehicles right now. And I wouldn't be surprised. Here we are, back. Back at the 629 mark when the Octopods are Chronoport back, and yeah, Octopods are Chronoport and re Chronoport back to help deal with this. And this is, of course, after this base was destroyed, so Chris's Chronoport was cancelled. Like, Chris never has never actually Chronoported anymore. That Chronoport they sent with the Veer class units never happened. Most of the Veer class units never got deployed, actually. So, yeah, that basically means they were never, they were never in harm's way. So those Veer class units are fine, they're sitting at a little teleporter station waiting to go down to the planet, and nope, nothing's happening. They're not getting deployed. Never getting deployed. Never, the annex to deploy them was never made. However, these fear class units do not nearly have the same luck. They are pretty much doomed to die in this horrible, arid wasteland while the Octopods and Octos destroy the RPs that were built. And the Far Pod looks like it is going, Far Pods should say, going towards the north. They will be able to destroy everything here in a very short span of time. Farpod's right here, getting into the main base, or not the main base, the only base that Chris has. He, they will be able to deal quite a lot of damage, destroying, well, closing down the RPs. Chris has tons of resources, though not a big deal. And this is where the Teth Veer can shine. However, most of these guys are Shin Beer. No, there are still some Teth Veer. It's half Shin Beer, half Teth Veer. The Teth Veer will be able to shine Quite a bit, actually. Wow, the Farpods are taking tons of damage. So Perlox, I'm not sure he's planning on Chronoport about the Farpods. It looks like he is. This is the Farpod Chronoport right here on the red timeline. Sorry, red time wave. The blue time wave, I don't think is carrying it, but it might be. It looks like Chris really doesn't have very much of a chance here. Yeah, the Farpods have Chronoport back, and the base Farpods... No, the base Farpods actually coming in. They were coming in and taking quite a bit of damage. So the Octos are protecting them. The Octos will be able... No, the Octos will dive... You know what? This might actually this Chronoport might actually end up canceling. I think those Octos were permacloned though. The far pod, one of the far pods won't end up going back in time from the looks of it. Hard to tell, but I don't think it'll actually manage to. That being said, I'm not 100 percent sure. It looks like there might have been a re Chronoport at some point. Chris is still in hot water right now. I don't see how he or not as much right now. He's still in hot water five minutes ago. Right now he's probably dead. But at the 813, 837 mark, yeah, one of the base far pods was destroyed. The Octos they did manage to chronoport back. One of them got killed, but like I said, he was probably permacloned. And this far pod, that far pod there is likely to not actually end up being that important. I don't think he's going to end up actually dropping off the face of the earth, or rather the far pod that did die. I don't think that its chronoclone is going to drop off the face of the earth. And even if it did, I don't see how Chris would be able to recover from this. And it, no, it doesn't look like there's anything going on. The, far, the chronoports haven't really changed much. Chris is in a very bad spot. He does have a slipgate being built over here in the south, in the northwest base. 
I don't see that being too useful. And however, he might be able to. He might actually be able to work with this. There is. Oh, it looks like a Chronoport actually managed to work out near the unplayable pass for him, but that won't make a difference. That's going to fall off into the immutable past. Do nothing. Perlox's point of view from the blue time wave, there is nothing for Chris right now. And Chris has actually Chronoported back a ton of units from the future, or from the present, rather. He did have a slipgate in his base here, and he's Chronoported back a ton of units. Probably going to try to rebuild with those units. He has tons of resources, and yes, he's doing exactly that, trying to rebuild. Holy crap, this would be absolutely awesome if he managed to do that. Build up, make that an annex, build up all the units, and no, it looks like... No, Chris has actually surrendered. Chris is... Yeah, he he's lost. He's... That... Well, it's kind of unfortunate. But that would have been really cool if he managed to do, pull that off, though. That would have been awesome. Anyway... Still, it was a very tight spot, and Chris really didn't have much of a chance, so he's, he surrendered, and that is... Actually, I don't think he had to surrender, he, he just lost. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy that, and have a good night, everyone!